Hello, my name is Mark Ware with the Somerset Historical Center and the Historical and Genealogical Society of Somerset County. Today we're going to take a look at the apple and its importance to the early settlers of Somerset County. Uh, the apples uh, were grown very early here. Uh, we have some early ledgers and journals and diaries. Uh, Peter Livingood in the late 1700s had hundreds of apple seedlings for his daughter in her dowry so that when she got married she'd be able to start an orchard. So we know that they were grown early on. and They were very versatile for the early settlers in Somerset County. Um, the apples could be eaten fresh. They could be dried into dried apple slices which would keep very well without refrigeration. Uh, in Somerset County we call those apple schnitz. Maybe it would be good for pies and apple dumplings. And of course cider. Cider had many uses. It could be used for um, making vinegar. The vinegar could be used for pickling other uh, vegetables such as cucumbers and, and so forth. And also if you take the cider, boil it down and add applesauce to it and possibly some sugar, you could get apple butter. Apple butter was kept very well without refrigeration. It was usually put into a crock covered over with a cloth tied with a string. It would keep very well. Apple butter would be eaten on bread, or it could be put on cottage cheese, or as the Pennsylvania Germans around here call it, schmearcase. Schmearcase and apple butter is a favorite treat. And the rest of the time, we're going to talk about making a good quality cider and how it's made. going to start with uh, how to make a good cider. And one of the things you'll want for a good cider is a blend of apples, several different varieties. You want an astringent apple, a sweet apple, and a tart apple. And we do have a variety of apples here. And cleanliness is one of the uh, important things in making a good cider. So we want to wash our apples really well, make sure they're well washed off before we start. We have two presses today. One is, uh, uh, they're both old presses. Uh, one is electric powered, and the other one is a hand crank powered. Uh, both do the same process, except one's just a bit easier than the other. Cider making is a two-step process. First, we have to grind the apples in the grinder part of the cider press. They fall into a basket at the bottom. We'll move the basket to the front, and then we'll use this screw to press down on the top of this and squeeze the uh, cider out of the apples. This is a little noisy process, so we'll fire this up, start grinding the apples. When a basket gets filled with the apples, ground up apples, we'll pull the basket forward under the, the wooden screw. Put a wooden block on the top to do the pressing, but first we have to fold our cloth bag over. This helps to keep the apples from squeezing out through the slats. It helps to strain the cider. And we'll build up the blocks underneath and start to press down.
put some more blocks under it. And we'll just let it rest a bit so that all the cider can squeeze out of it. When all the juice has been squeezed out of the, the apples, we'll back the screw off. out the blocks we'll dump these out we call these pummies in Somerset County and as you can see the apples are very dry all the cider has been squeezed out of it it'll make good uh, animal food for goats or the turkeys like to eat the seeds. And now we can take our cider. We get about two to two and a half gallons of cider out of a bushel of apples. We'll strain it. And normally we'll just let it sit so the settlings can settle out to the bottom. And there we have our fresh squeezed apple cider. It's a beautiful fall day here in at the Jacob Emmerich Cider Press. Uh, much like it uh, would have been 120 years ago or so when Jacob um, Emmerich invited his friends, neighbors, and family to his cider press, and they would all bring their apples in wagons or, or, uh, or uh, horseback and brought them to the press to be ground into cider. Uh, this press was a community hub where the local community would support it, and he's dotted the countryside around Somerset County. Uh, the Historical Center moved this cider press here several years ago from the southern part of Somerset County and reconstructed it here on site so visitors can see uh, the cider press in, in the way it would have looked when Jacob Emmerich had it, had it ready to press. The 1900 census for Somerset County listed 267,000 apple trees which produced a half million bushels of apples. From these apples, cider presses throughout the county produced 390,000 gallons of apple cider and 32,000 gallons of vinegar. For the farm family, apple cider was valued as a hard cider beverage, boiled down for adding to apple butter and mincemeat pies, and made into vinegar for pickling purposes. Numerous farms throughout Somerset County contained cider presses of various types. Many used heavy weights, such as large timbers or large wooden screws for pressing the cider. The Jacob Emmerich Cider Press, which was moved to the Somerset Historical Center in 1999, is the sole surviving press of its type in Somerset County, and few remain in the entire United States. Jacob Emmerich built the cider press sometime after 1886 when he acquired a parcel of land in Northampton Township, Somerset County. The massive timbers were hewn from trees taken from the woods on the farm. Jacob Emmerich, like many Somerset County farmers, was multi-talented. Along with farming, he was a blacksmith, cooper, and wheelwright. He easily fashioned the various metal and wooden components which make up the cider press. Farm agricultural statistics 
show that in 1924, Jacob owned 100 apple trees of fruit-bearing age on his 160-acre farm. The entire township of Northampton uh, listed 5,273 apple trees of fruit-bearing age and 605 of non-bearing age, providing ample business for the Jacob Emmerich Cider Press and other presses in the vicinity. The cider produced at the presses is taken back to the individual farms in wooden barrels and was made into hard cider, vinegar for pickling, and apple butter by the farm owners. The Jacob Emmerich Cider Press is, is a very large press. The, the main pressing beam is about 35 feet long. And probably the best way to explain how it operates is to use this scale model that we made uh, to help visitors understand how it worked. The first thing is the apples came into the press by wagon. They were unloaded in the back of the cider press and dumped into the hopper in the back where they were ground. The ground apples would fall into the trough, which is right here. They would shovel them out and put them onto the pressing table, which is right here. Slat would go on. A former, like this, would be put on the slat, covered with burlap, and then it would be shoveled, the ground apples would be shoveled over onto the, um, onto the burlap. When the burlap was filled, they would remove the former, and essentially you would have a, a bag of, of ground apples that look like this. This is called a cheese, and they would stack these up one on top of the other, with slats between them until it was the whole way to the top. When they had all the apples in there, they would be ready to do the pressing. Okay. Now that the apples were stacked, they would lower this beam down and so it was dead weight at the end and all the pressing would be right here above the, the uh, cheeses that were stacked up. As the beam rested on that stack of cheeses, it pressed the cider out. It would follow the groove out into a trough outside. They would then fill barrels um, as, as needed with the, the cider. And the way this mechanism worked to raise and lower it, even though the cider press was very massive, they used a sort of a seesaw mechanism to raise and lower the beam. They would take these pins, raise it up, put a pin in, go the other way, raise the beam, and keep going like that. That way they could raise and lower this, the massive beam so that the pressing would be done right over the, uh, the cider. We're here at the Sam Beachy and Sons Apple Butter Factory in Springs, southern Somerset County, Pennsylvania. This facility has been in operation for decades and people in the community, including the large Amish population here, Amish and Mennonite population, bring their apples here to be processed into cider and into apple butter. My family's been coming here for over 45 years making apple butter, which is sold at Mountain Craft Days at the Somerset Historical Center each year. The business is now run by um, Willis Summers and his, his family bought the business from Sam Beachy a number of years ago. So let's go inside and see how the more modern process of making cider and apple butter uh, proceeds. Our day begins by unloading the apples from the trailer. We bring them down in 20 bushel bins that weigh about 900 pounds each. We unload them into the hopper where they're, they go up a conveyor belt into the washer. From the washer, we pull off uh, several bushels of apples to be used for sauce that will be cooked in a steamer and then added to the boiled down cider later.
The remainder of the apples for cider go up the conveyor to the top of the cider press where there is a grinder. It mashes and grinds the apples where they're stored in a box. The workers drop the ground apple slurry into the pressing table. There's a former set up lined with fabric and when the fabric is filled they'll fold it over to make a bag. This is called a cheese. In between the cheeses there's a uh, slatted spacer that goes in between each layer. Once they fill each of the cheeses and stack them up, they're ready to begin the pressing. The cheeses are rolled back under the hydraulic press. As the press raises the apples and squeezes them, the cider runs out and is screened at the bottom of the, of the tank. The cheeses are unloaded by dumping them into another conveyor, which takes them outside the building and piles them up. These pressed apples are called pummies, and they're sold to sportsmen's clubs who feed them the seeds that are inside of the pummies to the turkey, wild turkey and other wildlife in the area. Cider has to be boiled down in a 3 to 1 ratio to make it very thick. Then applesauce is added and it's cooked further in the steam cooker. Spices are added, but we don't add any sugar to our apple butter, just all natural, made with only apple cider and applesauce. The thickness of the apple butter is checked by running it under the tin under a stream of cold water to see how well it sets up. If it's ready, it's pumped into the canning vat and then the jars are filled and packed for the customer.